Hey guys, I am back from Japan. Oh my gosh, I was there for about 10, 11 days and um, you guys all probably know that I was there because I talked about this trip leading up to it for about four or five months. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I purchased there. I purchased quite a few things. So this may end up being um, two videos or I may show you some of the things that I purchased in this video and then do a live stream and just show you some of the sillier things that I got, including this t-shirt. <laughs> This is a Guretama uh, t-shirt. He's laying on top of okonomiyaki, which is like my new favorite food in the entire world. But anyway, we can talk about that later. Um, so, uh, gosh, I don't even know where to start and I'm totally out of practice. I did zero filming while I was there. I was thinking about live streaming, but it was a challenge with the time difference. Japan is actually 16 hours ahead of Las Vegas uh, and you know 13 hours ahead of New York. And many of you are here in the US. Anyway, I was like, okay, forget the live stream. I also looked crazy because Japan is incredibly warm and muggy. So my hair was just, it looked like I got like a curl. <laughs> It was just nuts looking, like it was totally frizzy and I brought no makeup with me because I knew I was buying makeup. Anyway, that's a whole nother story which we will get into because I bought makeup but couldn't really use it there. Anyway, stay tuned. So before I get into what I purchased, I just wanna mention, please follow me on Instagram. So what I did was I just added onto Instagram stories, like much of my trip, like food that I was eating, of which there was a lot, places that I went to. Um, there were some places, in fact, a lot of places, they didn't allow photography or video, so I couldn't really get it. I got yelled at quite a bit, um, but I put up as much as I could and I added them to my highlights. So if you go to my profile, you'll see some highlight reels. And so I saved all of my Japan Instagram stories uh, to those highlight reels. You'll see probably like five of them. I just was gonna put one big one. Um, so I started with just Japan, but I didn't realize that there was a limit that you could only put up a hundred stories per highlight reel. So I started with Japan part one, and then I have Japan part two. And then I thought, let me kind of break it out by city. So then um, I have them by city. So I have Hiroshima, Osaka, and then Tokyo part one and Tokyo part two. So anyway, definitely follow me on Instagram and then check out those highlight reels if you are interested in kind of like more real time Japan footage. Um, I didn't vlog. That's basically my vlog. I'm not a very good vlogger at all. So I thought the Instagram stories would kind of serve that purpose. So anyway, um, I got to Japan. Uh, we flew into Tokyo. Um, my friend flew from New York. And so it was myself and, and her, Melissa, you'll probably see her on my stories. And so we met up in Tokyo. I got there about an hour, two hours before she did. So I just kind of hung out um, at the Haneda airport. And then we decided to just go straight to Kyoto. We were doing Tokyo last. And at the time, I was like kicking myself because, you know, the flight is so long, the time difference is crazy. And then to get to Kyoto, it was another like two and a half, like three hours probably total. We were delirious by the time we checked into our Kyoto hostel, but it was great because it was like nighttime by the time we got there and we just passed out. So, you know, of course there was jet lag, but I felt like I got onto Japan time like pretty, pretty quickly. So anyway, we did Kyoto and then we went to uh, Hiroshima, which was uh, where they were having the Fude Matsuri, which is the brush festival that they have. I thought that they only had once a year, um, but I was there and I met up with Sonia G whom you guys all know, and I'm sure you guys all love. Uh, she was there, she goes every year for this uh, brush festival. And of course now she goes for business. Um, and she was telling me that they actually have this brush festival twice a year uh, during the springtime, which she says is a much smaller festival. It's less attended um, and the fall one is bigger. So that was sort of the impetus behind me going to Japan. I just really wanted to go to this brush festival and see, and my friend Melissa that I went with, um, she's turning 40 later this year. So this was sort of her dream trip. And so we decided to kind of combine the two and she wanted to go to the brush festival. So definitely check out my um, Hiroshima highlight reel uh, in my Instagram stories that that's where you'll see all the kind of like brush festival stuff. So up until this point, I really didn't buy much. Like I didn't purchase that much in Kyoto because I was kind of saving all of my money basically for um, this brush festival and also for Tokyo. Cause I knew that was going to be like 
crazy shopping. So Sonia was so sweet. She decided to take us over to the Chikahoto headquarters, which is right there in Kumano, which is the very small town that's right outside of Hiroshima, which is where all of these brushes are made. So I got a lot of Chikahoto brushes and um, something that I saw, um, I think it was Fude Japan on Instagram. Um, he posted this brand new brush set that Chikahoto had just launched. And I was like, oh my gosh, fingers crossed that it's actually going to be, you know, here in Japan, you know, and I figured, of course it's going to be, and it was. So Chikahoto just launched um, a brush set made of silver fox hair. And I was like, my breath was completely taken away, not only because I've never been able to get my hands on Silver Fox brushes, but they're also really, really beautiful. They look uh, very different from a lot of the brushes that Chikohoto has um, already. So I haven't even opened this yet. I purchased this and I just kind of, you know, left it in my luggage. So um, here it is all wrapped up. It came in this uh, box and it also comes with a brush case. It's more like a brush roll. So this is what it looks like. So that's it. It basically just has room for the brushes that are in this set. So I was really excited uh, for this particular set, especially because a lot of uh, Japanese brush sets always include a couple of brushes that I, you know, I'm not really gonna use. Sometimes they include like an eyebrow brush, which I don't really use. And generally they include like a lip brush, which I definitely don't use very, very often. But this one basically has um, five, uh, five brushes, four of which are like face brushes and one is an eye brush. So I was really pleased because I know I'm gonna use all of them. So here is brush F0-1 and look at this like matte green metallic ferrule. It's so beautiful. And then this is natural wood. I think it's birch maybe I'm not sure what kind of wood this is but this is natural wood solid it is so so soft and to compare it to squirrel let me find a good squirrel hairbrush here to compare it to squirrel it's even I don't minkier these bristles I find to be softer even softer than squirrel hair so they're very very like minky and silky feeling so this is F0-1 and then here is brush F0-2 so this is a flat top kabuki same kind of design with the um, green ferrule and the wooden handle this one definitely has nice density. It's definitely bundled really tightly. So my first instinct is to use like a flat top kabuki with liquid um, products, but I am not going to be using these silver fox hairs with any kind of liquid or cream. I think they're too delicate for that. I'm going to stick with powders. So I'm thinking this will be great for kind of like contouring things like that. So that is the O2 brush. And then here's the F0-3 brush. This is more like a... Um, blush cheek brush. It's a little bit smaller than the O1. And both of these have like an oval ferrule. They're not perfectly round. So there's a little bit of flatness to them. And then here is F0-4. It's a little bit smushed. So it looks a little, whoop, looks a little asymmetric there, but I think it's just been packaged for too long. So here it is next to the O3. So it's a little bit shorter. This is gonna have, I think, a stronger application than this one. This is gonna be good for dusting things, I think. This is gonna be a little bit better for like placement. And then last but not least here is F0-5. And then this one is like a flat shader, but it's really big compared to an average shader. Let me show you the Chikahoto GSN 9 brush, which is like a very kind of general use shader. So you can see how much bigger it is. So this is great just, I think, for laying down a single shade. You know, maybe if you're setting down some like eye primer, I think this could also be great for like powdering underneath your eyes. Or if you're doing any kind of detail work, maybe you're like pinpointing like like highlight a little bit on your cheeks here. I think that would be great for this. And the bristles are fairly long, so you're not gonna get a super strong uh, application. So those are the five uh, silver fox hair brushes from Chikahoto. I don't know if these will be available in the US um, anytime soon. I am hoping Beautylish maybe will carry them. So what I would suggest is if you'd like to buy your Chikahoto brushes from Beautylish like I do, I would just write to them and say like, I saw these silver fox hair brushes on Instagram or on Michelle's channel or whatever, and I'm really interested in them. Will you be carrying them? And then at least they'll know that there's interest here and that they will carry them. But I'm not 
not sure where you're going to be able to get them. Oh, and something I totally forgot to show you, um, the chairman of the company, he's, I believe he's 87 years old and he still works at the factory. He still helps assembling rushes. Um, anyway, he came down to see Sonia because she was there and she did a huge favor for me and asked him to sign something for me. And I didn't have anything with me except that I had just purchased these brushes. So he actually signed the inside of the box. So I'm going to try and figure out how I can like frame this probably in some sort of like shadow box or something, but how amazing is that i was like almost in tears i was so moved that he would even do it so thank you to sonia thank you to mr takamori for signing this box cover for me and thank you sonia for facilitating this because i would not have had the nerve and i would not have been able to ask him to do it i just would have completely chickened out so thank you so those are the first bunch of brushes that I got at Chikahoto. I really lost it. So I purchased those. We were like in the main area of the Chikahoto um, building. They have like a few like little buildings. Um, and so we were like in the main one where they had like a nice display. Again, you'll see it on Instagram stories. And then it was like, I kind of peeked around the corner. I noticed all these uh, women kind of walking into like a different area and some were walking out with brushes. And I thought, what's over there? So they had like this little like outlet area and I like hot footed it over there. I was like, oh my God, is that an outlet? And I walked over there and they have some things. It's almost like um, seconds, like brushes that aren't 1000% perfect. You know, brushes that really aren't up to their standards. I, I can't tell the difference. I don't think anyone can really tell the difference except for the artisans there. So I purchased a whole bunch of brushes there at a fairly deep discount. So this brush set I had wanted to get, I think on Beautylish, um, and it was sold out. I think it sold out pretty quickly, but this I think is the Noel set. Yeah, the Noel collection. So this one is three brushes. I think they had like a different set, maybe with five brushes. Again, it had like that lip liner brush, which I didn't want, but this one had um, two face brushes and an eye brush. So here is the face brush, and this is what the Noelle collection design looked like. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know what year this was from. I think maybe not last year, but maybe the year before. I don't know, I can't really keep track, but I remember seeing these and thought they were really, really beautiful. And these are squirrel hair. And then here is a cheek brush. This is fairly narrow and kind of pointed, so I would probably use this for highlight, but oh, so, so beautiful. And then last but not least, we have this smaller, um, I guess like a detail brush, because this is not squirrel hair. I think this is sable, which is like one of my favorite um, hairs ever, but this is great, great, great for like cream products. And I just imagine using this for like concealer. This actually reminds me of the Surratt Perfectionist Concealer Brush which I cannot find in this mess of a room right now, but it really has a very similar kind of shape to it. So here are the three brushes that were included in that collection. And then, like I said, I went really, really crazy at the um, outlet part and yeah, got a lot of brushes. So let me see if I can <laughs> present these to you in any sort of organized uh, fashion. So I got a bunch of the Z brushes and this is the Z4 brush. This is the cheek and highlight brush. And I have the Z8, which I like to use for blush. So this is the Z8 brush and then this is the Z4, the one that I just got. So it's just a little bit of a smaller brush and they refer to this one as a cheek and highlight brush. And the Z4 I picked up for 3,500 yen. So that's about $35. So pretty good deal at the outlet. Um, and then I also got this Z2 brush um, and this was 3,700 yen. Um, so around $37. And this is their um, Z2 highlight brush. So it's a little bit more pointy and round versus the Z4. And then I also got the Z5 brush. This is the eyeshadow brush. Really nice flat shader. And this one was 2100 yen, so about $21. And then the rest of the brushes I got are part of the like GSN line, the ones with these like white handles. So I got the GSN one and then these are like marked. I don't know if, oh, there we go. Um, so they're marked differently. So that's, I guess, how they mark like, um, like their outlet ones. Yeah, so this is referred to as the special G1. So this is like a flat 
um, like big powder brush. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. And this one was 3,700 yen, so like $37. And then here is G2, which looks like this. So they printed this on their special G2. And then Chikahoto. I don't know if you can tell, but the lettering is kind of like holographic. So this is like a paddle but angled brush. Isn't that beautiful? I love that shape. Then I got a G8, and this was 5,900 yen. This is like a gigantic face brush. Let me hold it up to the one. So here's the one, and here's the eight. Oh my God, it feels so, so good. And then this one was 5,900 uh, yen, so about $59. And then here's the G9. It has like this uh, small handle, but super long ferrule. So this one was a bit more expensive. It was 8,100 yen, so about $81. And this hair is, it's squirrel hair, but I think it's a different squirrel. There's like gray and blue squirrel. One is softer than the other. I can never remember which one is which, but this one feels a little bit softer, a little bit airier than this one. You, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is like a little bit lighter in color, but I wonder if that's what's making this price a little bit higher. Um, and then finally, oh, so excited about this brush. This is the G12 and this is sable hair and it's like a flat paddle. This reminds me of like my all time favorite Armani slash Trish McAvoy brush that I love to use to blend out concealer. I just love sable hair for like cream, like thicker cream products. It's so, so good. So anyway, that is the G12. And this ended up being 2,900 yen, so about $29. So when we were leaving Chikahoto, they actually gave us this really beautiful like calligraphy brush. And I don't know if you guys know, but um, in Kumano where they hand make all of these brushes, the majority of the brushes that they make is for calligraphy. It's not for makeup, <laughs> it's for calligraphy. And so uh, we saw a lot of cal beautiful calligraphy brushes. I mean, huge brushes, um, calligraphy brushes that you would use to write with your like entire body. It was such a beautiful festival. And they have this um, ceremony where um, you burn old brushes, brushes that are basically too old uh, to go on. They've been very well used and well loved. And what they like to do is burn them, kind of send them on their way and to make room for newer brushes. And they invite, you know, visitors to the festival to um, throw some of the older brushes onto the flame that they had going. So we did that. And then you sign your name in this book and then they give you one of the new calligraphy brushes. So I got this one at the brush burning. And there is the imprint. And then in Tokyo, I went to the Hakuhodo Boutique and made out with a bunch of Hakuhodo brushes. So when I got there, I kind of had my heart set on getting a bunch of the S1 line, the like vermilion handled um, brushes, because again, they were a little bit less expensive in Japan. And I thought, oh, this is a really good time to kind of splurge for their most like prestigious line. Um, but I only ended up getting two of the eye brushes and then I'll show you the other line that I actually fell in love with. So this is the S142 brush. This is probably their most popular uh, blending brush. And I think I have this brush um, in their other lines. So Hakuhodo has this S line, which is the vermilion. It has this um, gold ferrule. And then they have basically the same exact brush shapes, but with a black handle and they're less expensive, but they're basically like the same exact brush. And I think I have the same exact brush, but with the black handle. So I just, I really like it. And I really just wanted, you know, the vermilion handle one. So I got that. Oh, and this is uh, squirrel hair. And then I also picked up the S133HS, and this is just a flat shader. And so I was looking around the showroom, and like I said, you know, I was really kind of focused on this whole S line and the vermilion handles. Um, and then I kind of noticed this kind of like nondescript brush line where the bristles are uh, squirrel and goat mixed. And on the little placard they had there, it said that you could use it with liquid and cream products. And I was like, what? So I got a whole bunch of these. Um, this is, what line is this? This is their G line. So this is the G6430 brush. And so I got this one because I thought this could be interesting for like liquid products because it kind of has like a flat top. I mean, it's rounded, but I felt like maybe it would be good to kind of like blend things in. I'm not sure, we'll have to see, but these are so, so soft. You can really feel the squirrel in here. I'm nervous about using this with liquid and cream, but they said it was gonna be okay. So I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. 
Um, and then I also got this one, which I'm not sure how I would use. I mean, I got this because I liked um, that it was angled and I liked that it was flat. And I thought maybe this could be good for like foundation, just really laying down some foundation. Um, but this is the, oh, you know, they don't have the brush name on the handles. Sorry. And they also don't have it on the little like tag here whoops I don't see it so so sorry but this is the G line for sure and then I got this smaller angled brush I've never seen one quite so small it's really really fairly petite but I thought this could be really interesting and then last but not least I got I guess you could call this a blender brush but it's fairly long and it's a little bit bigger than the average one but I thought that this could be interesting maybe for like concealer or something so these are the four brushes of the g-line that i got from hakahoto all right and last but not least um shakuda so shakuda is a brush line that i had never heard of but maybe more than a year ago at this point um one of my viewers one of you actually emailed me and said you know have you ever seen these brushes what's your opinion etc and i was like no i've never seen these brushes before they look really beautiful and at that time i went onto the shakuda site and they weren't you know, they didn't have a retailer basically in the US, but they were willing to sell it to you and ship it. But it ended up being very, very expensive. Like the shipping was was a lot, I remember. So I kind of like put it on the back burner. And I even thought, I remember way back then, if I ever make it to the brush festival or if I ever make it to Japan, I'm gonna get those brushes there. Like I really wanna look into them there. So that's what I did. And when I got to the brush festival, I went to the Mizuho uh, booth and Mizuho is the maker of Shakuda and they didn't have any there. And I was really like, oh shoot, okay, well, I'm sure they sell them in Tokyo somewhere, so I'll just find them in Tokyo. So I get to Tokyo, and I was actually staying in a hotel that was very close to Isetan, which is like Japan's like huge retailer. I mean, they're everywhere and they're gigantic and it's always crazy in there and they carry every single brand and it's very high end. So I had looked on the Shakuta site and their Instagram and they said, yes, you know, like at Isetan or whatever. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, I'll just go in there and, and get their brushes. So I walked in and like most department stores, all of the makeup is on the first floor. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and I couldn't find them. And I was really confused. I thought, well, where do they sell these brushes? So whatever, you know, I went about the rest of my time there. And then on the second to last day of being in Tokyo, I was like, okay, I need to find these brushes. I still have not come across them. I couldn't find them in Isetan. So I really started to like look hard, like on Instagram, like where can I find these brushes? So they kept saying they're at Isetan. And I come to find out that there is a second sub-level, uh, like basement two floor where they have a whole nother beauty section, but it's like their organic clean beauty section. And that's where it was. So if you go to Japan and you are looking for these brushes and you go to the Isetan in Shinjuku, you have to take the elevator down to B1. And then there is some like super secret escalator that goes down to B2. It's not that super secret, but you have to, the elevator doesn't go all the way down. You have to get off and then take an escalator down. It's also where the tax free counter is, which is a whole nother discussion, but that's where they are. And they're like way in the back and they just have this one little teeny tiny display. So it was a miracle that I found them. And I was so happy that I found them. So happy in fact, that I purchased seven <laughs> of the brushes. So let me show you what these look like. So I'm not even sure if you guys are familiar with them, but here they come in all of these boxes with like a picture of the brush and it tells you what kind of hair it is. Um, and then the handles, which I'll show you, are made out of walnut. So this is their 802 Sheer Face Brush. And this is what the brush looks like. Isn't that amazing? So there's no separate like ferrule. It's all created out of this one piece of walnut and it's engraved. There's like Shakuta engraved there. And then the number of the brushes there. I don't know if you guys can even see that. It looks like it's part of the wood grain, but it is printed there. So this one is squirrel and goat hair. This is number 804, their soothing face brush. So this has a round shape to it. Again, walnut handle. And this is um, gray squirrel hair. And then I also got their, what do they call this? This is the 812 cream foundation brush. And this is undyed goat hair. And then this is 822, their sheer eye brush. It actually has a really interesting pointy shape. And this is a fairly big shader brush. Again, if I'm gonna compare it to the Chikahoto GSN9, you can see how much larger it is. Oh, and that was gray squirrel hair as well. 
And then this is their 823 blending eye brush. This is also gray squirrel hair. And this is quite pointy and it is round in shape. And then here is 824, a smoky eye brush. And then this one is in pony hair. So this is gonna be uh, quite firm and great for kind of like smoking out like the lash line or whatever. And then last but not least, uh, Shakuta makes, and I think this is actually what they're kind of most known for. They make these like body and face brushes. Um, they have these like rectangularly shaped ones with like, uh, like six tufts of hair or nine tufts of hair and you can use it as like a body brush I was really really tempted to get those um, but I kind of had to like reel myself in and I thought that this one could be really interesting so this is actually one of their face brushes and this is actually used to clean your face so it kind of looks like a men's you know when they apply like shaving cream that's what it kind of looks like but I really liked how soft yet firm this brush is. So I thought it'd be, you know, fairly effective to like gently kind of like clean my face on days where I don't feel like I'm terribly dirty. And the bottom is angled, so it'll sit um, at an angle, which I thought was really beautiful design. So that is their face brush, and this is undyed goat hair. So those are all the brushes that I got from Japan. I'm trying to figure out how long I've been talking. So I've been talking for almost an hour, so I think I'm gonna cut this video here. I did purchase some makeup. I did purchase a lot of stationery, and I did purchase uh, some clothing and some sneakers. So I think what I'll do maybe is like a try on haul with the actual makeup and the other things I think I'll talk about during a live stream, like the silly stuff, like the stationery and some of the sneakers that I got and things like that. So definitely stay tuned for that and definitely subscribe if you are interested in seeing what else I purchased in Japan. Um, I'm also gonna be talking about um, some travel tips to Japan if you've never been and you're interested in going. I think I'll also do that in the live stream. I'm hoping to do another live stream this week. But anyway, subscribe, stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to try and link to everything down below, but there are some things that I'm not sure there's a link for, like those silver fox hair brushes from Chikohoto. But I will leave as much information as possible down below in my description box. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.